Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. In today's episode, I want to continue talking about the problems with living in Colombia. While this information is applicable to people who are just vacationing there and traveling there for just a shorter period of time, it becomes much more relevant for those of you guys who are thinking about potentially looking for a new home, settling down there, living there part-time, and and or spending any sort of a significant amount of time living in that country. If you haven't checked it out already, please check out episode 153 where I talk about the uh, safety concerns and dangers and violence associated uh, with most of the major metropolitan cities of Colombia. Please check that out because this is the continuation of that video. As you folks know, I make it a point on this channel to provide men with options, but at the same time, giving them real uh, un real information with no hype that's accurate, that's uh, direct from living there. So um, please, so, so let, let, let's continue on. And here are the other four major considerations when I think about problems and Colombia uh, as a country. The uh, point number one of this video is political instability. And I've been going to Colombia uh, ex uh, extensively since 2011, but I was first there in 2009. As I make this video today, it is 2022. So I've been traveling to Colombia now for 13 years. And, and for the first time in my in, in all my time going there, the first time last year, I had friends tell me in Cali consistently across the board, don't come here. This was during the spring of 2021, where the whole nation was rocked by political instability and riots and social upheaval in response to a law that the government tried to pass, which would have severely impacted negatively a lot of Colombians and especially those amongst the lower classes who can ill afford to pay higher taxes. There were riots, there was violence from both sides, the police were shooting people, things were shut down, cities were barricaded by protests, food and oil couldn't get in. It was a mess on top of the, the <clears throat> pandemic mess that people were dealing with. So you have a nation that, based on recent demonstrations and riots, is not very politically stable. And this also branches into the other aspects which I will cover in this video, but this is not the, <laughs> starting with uh, the, the, a huge chunk of the population, very upset, on the brink, unstable and ready to uh, riot and overthrow the government is not exactly the greatest greatest base to start from when you think about a place that you might want to live in with great political uh, stability. Now, when you compare that to recent events in Canada and what the government did to those citizens there, and also even in the United States of America with the diminishing rule of law lower enforcement of laws, and just um, other things which would make a trend towards being a banana republic. While that, while the, the, a place such as the USA may be in decline, it's not anywhere close to what you have in Colombia. It's getting there and may, may get there pretty darn fast, but Colombia has, has now had a, um, a proven history, recent history, where things are not stable as the, um, you know, when it comes to the general populace and the government. Do with that what you, with it what you view. Uh, do with that what you will. And for me personally, the fact that for the first time ever, despite just Cali being especially unsafe in general, having my friends, the residents who were born and raised in Cali, Cali all across the board tell me don't come here for the first time last year well that's not good and leaves a bad feeling 
in uh, the, the pit of the stomach when you when you think about where this country, which I love, is headed in general. And related to that, you have a government similar to a lot of what you will find in the USA is a government that doesn't seem to care about the well-being of its citizens, especially their needs, basic needs on, on a day-to-day -day basis, things that they need to uh, to strive and thrive and, uh, and prosper. And while the American government ruling class may be, and the government politicians may be just generally clueless, on top of that, in Colombia, you have a an even greater degree of people who believe that the government in general is very corrupt. And this has been going on for decades now. And, and uh, I don't have time to cover all of that because I can only talk about what I read, but this is the general feeling that I'm able to get talking to people, who, including some friends who are actively involved in politics and in political campaigns. The, the faces come and go, they change, but yet the, the government doesn't seem to be able to win the trust of its people. Now, this may have something to do with the fourth turning and the general upheaval the world is going through in general. Please check out that subject on YouTube if you're interested in, in it. Um, what we are going through is the end of an approximate 80 year old cycle where things just get get really wacky until and, and out of control until they stabilize but um, things aren't great in that regard and um, if you guys thought that the, the 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 people in the US hated their government well you 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 should talk to the Colombians and see how they feel about not just their federal government, but about the local government, because even those local governments have a hand in making things significantly worse. Now, I, I can't explain or remember the exact reason why, but uh, a, a friend of mine who was involved in the mayoral race of of Cali and has been for, for many years, you, uh, you can see how the local governments can directly affect the quality of life within a city. In Cali, for example, when I first went there for the first time in 2009, that those were still one of the pioneering years of the early days before the rush of tourists came into Colombia, after the world figured out that the government had improved things to a degree where it was safe enough to travel to and live in. And starting in the, uh, the, the mid, maybe early mid, uh, 2010s when they had the advertising slogan uh, Colombia the only risk is wanting to stay which brought millions and millions and millions and millions of, of travelers before the pandemic shut everything down uh, starting in, in 2020 there was a general sense starting from around 2011 to about uh, 2015 2016 I would say in the city of Cali where Crime and instability and and things in general were just getting better and uh, to a degree that was noticeable, especially in the tourist areas where things were safe enough for tourists and there were police on every corner looking out after people and and that went on for a few years and those were the golden years of that city. But after a new mayor was elected, those cops and the rigorous enforcement of laws and and um, and the emphasis on safety just disappeared the cops disappeared and the the crime and instability and and um, insecurity remained so that uh, the sentiment amongst my friends and also the the visitors turned a uh, turned sour once again to so to become similar to where it was like 10 years ago when I first started traveling before the security was beefed up. So things go up, things go down, things go up, things go down, but the government seems to be able to um, affect at least the safety aspect of the local citizens. And for some reason, it's uh, in the city of Cali, as one example, it's poorly enforced. So the, the government is not reliable in that regard and the citizens suffer as a result. So that covers some general political in, 
instability mixed in with safety and politics and also law enforcement, right? That's point one. Point two is the continued devaluation of the Colombian peso. And while the US dollar has devalued, the Colombian peso continues to devalue at an even more rapid rate. When I first started traveling to Colombia, one US dollar was 1,700 pesos. Last time I checked, it was somewhere around one US dollar is 3,700 pesos, and it was as high as like 3,900, almost 4,000 at one point. So while the dollar has devalued during this time, in the 13 years I've been traveling to Colombia, at one point recently, very recently, it was as bad as two and a half times less valuable relative to the dollar than just 13 years ago. So while it may not be at ridiculous Argentina level in or Venezuela level of inflation, it is at a level, uh, I'm sorry, uh, currency devaluation levels are not as bad as Venezuela or uh, Argentina. It is certainly worse than what any of us living in the United States of America have ever seen in our lifetime to a, um, and it's a one degree greater than that. So that the, the value drops by two and a half times, tw at minimum twice over the span of 13 years. That is not good, folks. So this poses a problem for anyone who hopes to set up a local business here that transact in pesos. It's always going to be an uphill stream to, to keep up. And in, and for things that are manufactured outside of Colombia, like most things are, such as TVs and, and uh, decent automobiles and uh, televisions and phones and, and computers, well, they just keep on getting more and more expensive in Colombian peso terms. But the, the salary you would get and the, the salary of the general populace doesn't increase too. So it's really hard to increase your prices to cover those costs. So if you're earning just pesos, if you happen to be living here, it's a struggle to just keep up with uh, inflation worldwide as your peso continually de de devalues. It is better to earn euros and dollars and then convert it as needed to Colombian pesos and then you'll have a much better time. An example of this would be my English teacher, uh, my Spanish teacher who lives in Armenia and I take online lessons with him. He's a he's been able to keep his prices steady for years. Why? Because in Colombian peso terms, he earns he continue earn, uh, continues earning more over time. So he keeps his price affordable, but he keeps winning in life. But that is a rare guy. He's educated. He put in the time to become the best in his craft, to become an excellent Spanish teacher. But when you take the, the average Colombian making the, the minimum salary, working as a, a cashier or, or, or a janitor or, or a shopkeeper or as a general merchant, when he, when, when uh, even the business owners, when everyone else around them is getting poorer, it's hard to keep up, all right? So the devaluation of the Colombian peso is point two. Point number three is general inflation, which is hitting the entire world very hard now. The majority of my friends are college-educated, bilingual, working-class professionals in that country. And even those guys who are earning above average income, including doctors and surgeons, they are getting hammered hard. As I mentioned uh, in the point below, you have the devaluation of the peso, but then you also have inflation on top of that. So let's say that the inflation rate in Colombia, the official uh, inflation rate has been about 10% a year consistently every year for as fast as I, for, for as fast as I, for as long as I can remember. Remember, so when you tack on 10% inflation on top of 10% currency devaluation, you're looking at an effective loss of purchasing power of savings of about maybe 20% a year, maybe even higher. Imagine that for the guys who have a lot of savings and who are earning a good salary, imagine getting a 20% pay cut a year. That is what's happening to the country. And I don't really see a way out of this. I'm just monitoring it. But I can tell you that it's hurting for a lot of people. In the US, absolutely, with ridiculous gas prices, $8 
at the time of the recording of this video in the, in, in Las Vegas, uh, based on images I'm seeing floating around the internet, it's really, really rough. And a lot of the Colombians that were already on the edge are getting priced out and life is getting increasingly harder for them. Which brings me to the next point, which is the fourth and final point of this video, and that is the destruction of the middle class and an increasing amount of people going back into poverty. So the poverty rate, uh, as par partially as a result of the aforementioned factors, was increasing slowly even before the vid lockdowns, which caused a GDP loss of something around 10%. Imagine taking an entire country's economy and just boop, chopping 10% off of it. They went backwards for years. Good GDP growth is in the single digits. They went back a couple of years, two, three, four years of decent GDP growth as a result of the vid lockdowns of the past two years. It's really bad. And the poverty rate uh, was, I think right now as it stands, is approximately 51% and it keeps on going up. Compare this to the United States of America where the poverty rate is about 25%. Now, I know a lot of people in the middle class aren't having a great time right now due to inflation, but if you think about America as a whole, especially for you guys who have traveled to most of the United States of America and have had uh, experience with a lot of the major metropolitan cities, we we generally, I, at least for me, I generally have a good sense of what poverty is like in the USA. This goes from the uh, you know the the most dangerous and low income neighborhoods of the major metropolitan cities of America, including Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, uh, etc. Et uh, all the tier two, uh, the smaller tier two cities, uh, maybe. Newark, Fort Lauderdale, uh, I don't need to list all of them, and, and you know, the Appalachian Mount, Mountains, the, the flyover states, uh, all these places where people don't normally travel to, you just generally get, I generally get a sense and a composite of how things are and, you know, get a feeling for the pulse of, of wealth and poverty in America. And to me, a 25% poverty rate is unacceptable. It is no damn good, and we can do a heck of a lot better. And I hope to be, be uh, you know, whatever in whatever capacity I can to be contributing towards improving that. But 25% is alarmingly bad for for a guy who understands what that means. And when I think about now Colombia, by Colombian standards, which are even lower than that of the United States, you have 51% of the people living uh, near that poverty line or below it. So having a nation which, with, with a GDP that is just a fraction uh, that of the uh, first world countries such as the United States of, of America, England, or Canada, and an increasing uh, poverty rate and a, the continued destruction of the lower middle class, shifting more and more people into the poverty rate, and with only 25 people to 25% of people being able to be considered middle class by Colombian standards, that's not a very good recipe for the, for a, um, for a, a bright future. And I don't expect things to get better in, in, um, in the near future. And while if, if, for example, uh, if, if you're a retiree and you have Social Security income, or you have a rental property in America, and you can make dollars and convert those dollars to pesos. You're going to be okay. You'll be definitely in the upper class, the high earning class, and you can shield yourself from a lot of these so-called uh, low income problems. You can take cabs everywhere. You can afford to have a car. You can live in a nice gated building or community with good security and you will be shielded if you want to and you can uh, get away from a lot of the most poverty stricken areas in Colombia. But when you can combine all of these factors that I've, I've talked about across these two videos now, 
general safety, political instability, devaluation of the Colombian peso, inflation, and the destruction of the middle class, I really think to myself that as the days go by, right now at least, uh, going back to live full time in Colombia is, is not really um, not really a good option. It's just for for me personally, I decided that it was that I could have a better life elsewhere, and as a result, I am not currently living there full time. And I'll talk more about this in the near future, but I hope that this video has been informative. As always, I try to give you guys real accurate information and don't sell you a fantasy. And as I continue to develop this channel and provide options and in, options for and information to men, eventually I think you guys will see that what as it pertains to your life, and uh, let's say, for example, you have a crappy dating life in America. While you may have a great dating life in Colombia, by comparison, you're also going to be buying a different set of problems that comes with living in that particular country and city. No place in the world is, is perfect. Believe me, I've traveled all across the world. And while some places may come close to meeting the majority of your needs as a unique individual, Things always change and it's and the world is funky enough right now so that it's really hard to carve out a permanent place where you can grow deep roots and be secure knowing that you're going to be okay and that this is going to be a base for a very long period of time. That's why you have a lot of people that are basically rootless and moving from here to there, here to there, here to there and even the and I'll make a the next video I make will be about this. It's about people just leaving Colombia in general. All right. Um, so I hope this video has been informative. And if you need help uh, or some guidance thinking about your life and about the future, about where you might want to live or explore or travel to, Saiyan Chan Consulting is open and available for the viewers of YouTube and we'll be launching officially soon. Email me at sayinchan at protonmail.com if you're interested, or you can hit me up on Instagram, sayin underscore chan. For everyone else, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and help me get to a thousand subscribers soon this year so that I can continue helping men and providing them with options. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.